The online world, it's all about the visual and sound experience, but with three other sensors, it can leave us short. Studies have demonstrated that over half of human communication is non-verbal, so scientists are working on ways to communicate taste, touch and smell over the internet. I've come to the City University London to meet Professor Adrian Chiuk, who's at the forefront of augmented reality with new technology that will allow you to taste and smell through a mobile phone. Adrian, this sounds completely unbelievable. Have you really found a way to transmit tastes and smells via a mobile device? Yes, in our laboratory research, we've been making devices which can connect uh, electrical and digital signals to your tongue as, as well as your nose. So for example, for taste, we've created a device which you put on your tongue and it has electrodes. What those do is uh, artificially excite your taste receptors. So certain electrical signals will, will excite the receptors and that will produce artificial taste sensation in your brain. So you'll be able to experience, for example, salty, sour, sweet, bitter, the basic taste on, from your tongue without any chemicals. Um, and with smell, we're going in a couple of tracks. One is uh, using chemicals and it's devices that you can attach to your mobile phone and these devices will emit chemicals. So that means that um, with apps or software on your phone, you can send someone a smell message. For example, you might get a message on Facebook and it can send the smell of, of a flower. Um, or if, if your friend's not in a very good mood, it can be a bitter smell. So the next stage of that, we're making devices which will have electrical and magnetic signals uh, being transmitted to your olfactory bulb, which is behind your nose. It'll be a device that you put in the back of your mouth have magnetic coils and similar to the electrical taste actuation it will excite the olfactory bulb using electrical currents and then this will produce an artificial smell sensation in your brain. Already scientists have been able to connect optical fibre to neurons of mice and that means that we can connect electrical signals to neurons. With the rate of change, for example, with Moore's law, you get exponential increase of technology. I think within our lifetimes, we're going to see direct brain interface. So in fact, what you will get is that essentially you can connect all these signals directly to your brain um, and then you will be able to uh, experience uh, a virtual reality without any of these external devices, but essentially connecting to the neural centers of your brain. And of course, that also connects to the internet. So essentially what we will have is, is direct internet connection to our brain. I think that will be something that we will see in our lifetime. So direct brain interface, that sounds kind of dangerous. I mean, could there be any side effects? Well, we're still at the very early stages now. So scientists that can, could connect, for example, uh, one optical fiber to, to the neuron of, of a mouse. And so what it's shown is it's shown that we can actually connect the biological, biological world of brains to the digital world, which is computers. Of course, this is still extremely early stage now. Uh, you know, uh, the, the bio, bioengineers can connect, you know, one, one, neuro, one neuron or single neuron. So we're not anywhere near that level where we can actually connect to humans. You would have to deal with a lot of ethical and also uh, privacy, social issues, uh, risk issues. Uh, now, if you have a virus on your computer, it's, the worst that can do is cause your com computer to crash. But, um, you know, you could imagine, worst case, someone could reprogram your brain. Uh, so we'd have to really think very carefully. Well, why is it important to offer smell over the internet? Fundamentally, smell and taste are the only two sensors which are directly connected to the limbic system of the brain. And the limbic system of the brain is the part of the brain responsible for emotion and memory. So it is true that smell and taste can uh, directly and subconsciously trigger your emotion, trigger your memory. Now that we're in the internet age, where more and more of our communication is through internet, through the digital world, that we must bring those uh, different senses, touch, taste and smell, to the internet so that we can have a much more emotional sense of presence. What will this be used for? Like all media, people want to recreate the real world. When cinema came out, people were filming, you know, scenes of city streets and, you know, be able to capture that on film was quite amazing. But as the media developed, then it became a new kind of expression. And I believe that will be the same for the taste and smell media. Uh, now that it's introduced, at, at first people just want to recreate smell at a distance. So for example, um, you want to send someone uh, the smell of flowers. 
So Valentine's Day, for example, maybe you can't meet your lover or your friend, but you can send the virtual roses and the virtual smell of the roses to his or her mobile phone. But at the next stage, it will lead to, I think, new, new kinds of creation. For example, music before, if you want to play music, you needed to play with an instrument like a violin or a guitar. But now, the uh, young people can compose music completely digitally. Even there's applications on your uh, mobile phone, you can compose music with your finger and it's really professional. Similarly, that will be for smell and taste. We will go beyond just recreating the real world to making new kinds of creation. So will it also have a commercial use? For advertising, because smell is a way to trigger emotions and memories subconsciously. Um, now, you can shut your eyes and you can block your ears, but it's very rare that you, you, you ever block your nose because you can't breathe properly. So people don't block their nose and that means advertising can always be channeled to your nose and also if you can directly trigger a memory or an emotion, that's very powerful. We received interest from one of the major food manufacturers and we're having a meeting again soon, uh, but they make frozen food and uh, the difficulty to sell frozen food is you can't smell it. You just see these boxes in, in the freeze, freezer, but because it's frozen, no smell can be there. But if they can, they want to have our devices so that when you pick up the, the frozen food, maybe it's like a uh, lasagna, well, you can have a really nice smell of what it would be. How expensive will this be? We're aiming to make devices which are going to be cheap, because I think only by being very cheap can you make mass market devices. So our current device, actually to manufacture it, is only a few dollars. Adrian, thank you. Thank you very much.